Okay. All right, everybody. I was just uh, informed that the sound was not on. That's my mistake. Uh, my name is Carlo. I'm the associate here at Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery, and today we've got Frederica Antonio from Acamo Pueblo. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with her work, uh, you ought to be. She does some of the finest painted pottery from Acoma that, uh, that we carry here, just exquisitely eye-dazzling and very, very finely done. Uh, all traditionally built and painted using <laughs> the mineral pigments that you can see on the table there. Uh, Frederica, <laughs> once more, welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you, and uh, I, I see you've got a pot going right now. Could you just say a little bit about that again? Um, this is the, the corn pattern, that's the yellow corn that um, we have plants, yellow corn, red corn, and then this is going to be the um, Four Seasons pot. And uh, it's a traditional pot, uh, it's hand, hand thrown. And these are all the natural pigment paints that I use. Um, I use the yucca leaf to make all, I chew it down to fibers to make all the fine lines on the pot, and then I also. Um, uh, chew it down to like a small paintbrush to fill in the pot. Mm. And these are um, also the paints that I use. I use the bee weed. And that's a, a interesting stone you have working there. Can I ask where you where you got that piece? Um, that you mix the a, paints in. In a, like a ditch or a, like a. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So was it, was it uh, that deep, or have you been, as using it, kind of deep um, it, making it deeper there? Well, um, it's just from just um, mixing the clay like this, and it just it's slowly getting, yeah, it's getting deeper and deeper. That's wonderful. So the design that you're putting on right now is uh, the Four Seasons design. Now, for all of the pieces that you have the 4 Ds and design on, is it the same for each of the seasons? So is winter always the same yeah. pattern? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Would you be willing to share which, which is which season? Um, well, this one right here, the coming down is the um, winter. It's like mm. the snow, and then the, this one's like, the spring, mm. the rain, and then this is um, summer, and then this is fall. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. And then like that, um, that lizard pattern over there, um, that one's the hardest one to paint because what I have to do is I line the whole pot, and after I line the whole pot, then um, I fill in the, the pattern, the black pattern, and then after I fill in all the black, I put the red, after I do all the red, then I put in the yellow, and after I do all the whole pot with the colors, I have to line the whole pot going around and coming down. It's like painting two pots in one. Amazing. Yeah. And so we have a number of really beautiful pieces from Frederick at the moment. That one, I believe, is uh, a slightly older work. We actually had somebody bring some pieces in on consignment. Yeah. And we were thinking maybe 2010 or so? Yeah, it, th those are really old, old um, pots that, that uh, I had done. I haven't done any in a while because they're harder to paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then um, like the newer, newer styles is just like from um, like last year and this year, like mm. the, um, the canister. That yes. one that we just done this year. That's right. And also this one. It's a new one. I love that. Uh, so this this one that we have on the table here that you brought us finished, this is a infinity bowl. Yes. Right? And uh, could you tell everybody a little bit about what the sort of origin of the infinity bowl design is or how that came about for you? Um, well, when, when, when I um, was gonna let it dry, I put it upside down and then it kind of went in. So instead of trying to pull it back up, because I was trying to pull it back up mm -hmm. and then it cracked, so I just left it like that. So I just kind of made it in, inward, over. yeah. So I just, I just left it. 
Because a lot of the infinity bowls we have, and, and they sell very quickly. You can see there aren't yeah. any. Uh, <laughs> there aren't any left because <laughs> people love them. Um, yeah. Or I guess there's a little yeah, one there's there. Small there's one. one there. So this is the first one I've seen, and I don't know if you've if you've done it before, but the shouldered infinity bowl. Yeah, it's, it's the traditional traditional style. Right. Um, infinity, With the infinity yeah. rim. Yes. That is a beautiful so, piece. My thank word. You. And so you've already done some work on the piece you're, you're currently painting. Um, well, before you start the actual application of the color, you've built the piece up from coil, you've polished it, and just to, just to kind of let people in on the amount of work that's already been done to this piece. Yeah, after I um, built, uh, built the pot, I let it dry a little bit. After I let it dry, then I scrape it with the... Um, the, like the spam can or the and then after right. I do that then I smooth it out with the water and then I let it dry after I let it dry then I use a, um, a sandpaper to kind of smooth it out and after I do all that then I um, use the um, I get the white slip and I put it on there it's the polish mm -hmm. and I get a polishing stone and then I polish it and then that's how it comes out like shiny yeah to hold the pot. If you don't put the um, the polish on, and when you go like this way, the paint will wipe off. And you have to put the polish on so the paint can stay. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. And so you, you're, uh, you've got a couple brushes here. It yes. looks like you picked out one that you're gonna use for, yeah. for now. Yeah, I, I make a couple of them. This one is like for the larger, like for these, where I can fill it in, the colors. And then this one is for like the small, small filling in of the small squares. Amazing. And so it looks like you're doing the, uh, one of the seasonal patterns right now. Yeah. Is that uh, fall? Uh, excuse me? Which uh, season are you painting now? Um, the summer. Summer. That's appropriate. It's uh, it's really beautiful out here today in Santa Fe. We got a car show on the plaza, and it's like seventy five degrees. It's lovely. Perfect day to be painting some summer summer yeah. pattern. So a question we get a lot uh, is how, how long does it take you from start to finish when it comes to the painting? Um, I'm gonna, it just depends on, on how, how long, if I don't have to do anything that day. Right. Yeah, like in the morning, I have to take my granddaughter to school and pick her up, come home. And then I start like from maybe eight to 12. Mm -hmm. And then after eight, then we have uh, lunch, and then after, then I start again. But in, in between, I take breaks. Of just course. Because get tired of sitting. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. I feel like to the extent that I've ever done sort of careful work, like nothing like this, <laughs> yeah. of course. But even when I'm just sewing or something, yeah. after a while, my back starts hurting, my yeah. shoulders start hurting. Neck. Yeah. It's exceptionally uh, trying work, to be sure. Um, And one of the remarkable things is that you grid out the entire piece before you begin painting. Yeah. Which is also done, I mean, last time you were here, I think you were showing us a little bit of the gridding process. Mm -hmm. And you're applying each of those lines by hand, by rotating the pot uh, as you hold it. And just really, 
you know, just goes to show the inordinate amount of work that you, you put into these pieces and how, how your hand is present at every moment in the process. If you have any questions for Frederica, you're welcome. Welcome to ask. Yeah. Hmm. I guess my question is, are these glazes and will piece the fire again, or do you fire the piece and then this is painted on and that's produced? Yeah. Would you like to answer that, Frederica? Uh, she, she was asking uh, if the paints that you're applying. Um, Well, all the, all the paints that we have, that I have on here, are all natural pigment paints. They're from a sandstone. Okay. And what I do is I um, get the sandstone and I put it in a bucket and put water in it and strain it and keep straining it until it gets real um, soft. And then um, I get the rocks, the ones that I drain out from there, and then I um, put it to the side. And I do put the paint on there and after I do that then I fire it. Fire when, like yeah when I finish the whole pot then I fire it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're working on a on fire yes. piece. Okay, yeah. so then you fire Yeah. Um mm -hmm. the our clay is um gray like this. And then when it gets fired they get white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Exquisite. Thank yeah. you for yeah. the explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's humbling. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm always, uh, yeah, I can barely tie my shoes, so <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> it's just incredible. Exceptionally. It's a yucca. So it's a, a few fronds from the yucca, or fibers from the yucca plants. Um, and she's got a couple different sizes there for the smaller and larger portions of the piece. Yeah. And, the, and that, that brown or, or sort of black that you see on the piece's finish that she's applying now is uh, it's a waco or bee weed. Uh, it's a, a botanical pigment that's uh, boiled and then sort of used almost like a watercolor. My understanding is that uh, the botanical pigment only will only render black if there's a sufficient quantity of what I believe is a volcanic um, mineral uh -huh. in the clay, uh, such that um, you know I, I th at, at Acoma they have a pretty high content of that, mm -hmm. so they can do these really beautifully intricate paintings. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I would say that Akuma has a pretty long tradition of doing sort of polychrome works, mm -hmm. uh, though there, there are a lot of very recognizable pieces from Akuma that are mostly done in that reduced palette. Um, But these days, I think they have some of the most intricate geometric designs of any of the Pueblos. Yeah, which is maybe an understatement even, looking at these, my gosh. 
So Frederica, there's one piece that you have here. It's kind of a square, a square shouldered piece. Oh yeah. It, I, I haven't seen one of yeah, those that's, before. Yeah, that's one of the newest ones for that. That's amazing. How, can I ask, how, uh, how long did it take for you to kind of figure out how that was going to get built? Or did you just knock it out of the park right away? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We just... That's an incredible piece. Yeah. <laughs> it, the way it feels in your hand is just amazing. Yeah. I can't, uh, I can't overstate how beautiful... And one of the things I think that I love so much about your work is in addition to their just being mesmerizing to look at, they feel incredibly balanced and light. Um, they really do feel wonderful in the hands, which I think is one of the most important pieces of the, of the puzzle for me anyway. Yeah. Just exquisite. And I wondered if you could uh, describe a little bit the design that you have on the, um, the lid of that cylinder that you made. So it's the second cylinder. The first one you brought us had no design on the top. Um, um, it didn't have no design? No, I don't think so. I think it was just plain, plain white. Uh, that was like the bird, bird, bird pattern. Let's see if I can show that off. That's a beauty. The other one had a, um, like a, it? like one of my old, older patterns on it, the, the oh, other okay. Lid. I think I'm losing my memory a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other one had a pattern like this. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, my mistake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I should say. So I haven't seen you do that uh, sort of bird pattern. No. Before I, really. I just tried to try to do something simple. Yeah. Because I I done one early, um, before. Yeah. But then that one cracked, so I had to do another one. Oh yeah. okay. So I just kind of done something. It was simple. a little bit easier yeah. to do. That makes sense. Because that's a kind of almost like a plate shape. Yeah. And those are incredibly difficult to fire, as I understand. Yeah. Or they're they're prone to breaking.
So how long have you been uh, making pottery for, Frederica? Uh, for like about 30 plus years. Oh. And will you be doing the, uh, attending the market this yes. summer? Yes. Wonderful. How many years have you been doing that for? I think like about four or five years. Oh, wow. So when you're um, starting a piece, uh, this is a question I, I think I've asked you before, um, do you have a kind of sense once you have the shape of the vessel what kind of design is going to go on it? No. So no. You, just, just maybe describe how, how you come to a design for a particular piece. It just, I don't know, it just seems like when, when I put my paintbrush down it just goes like, wow. wants to go its way. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Hmm. There's, a, there's that famous book that um, I'm sure a lot of our customers would be familiar with that Stephen Trimble wrote, uh, Talking with the Clay, I believe. Uh -huh. Which seems, the more I speak with potters and, and painters here, uh, seems to be quite the appropriate title, given that a lot of the artists that I've spoken with seem to describe a similar process where they're like, yeah, I just kind of wait, and then once I put the, the brush down, it kind of tells me what, it yeah. starts doing it almost, yeah, almost on like, its own, no? Mm. It wants to go its own way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you... Remind, remind everyone who, who you uh, learned pottery from initially. Um, my mother-in-law, his mom, mm -hmm. Mildred. She's the one that... Yeah, what was her name again? Mildred. Mildred. Mildred Antonia. Mildred Antonio. I've seen, I've seen some of her pieces around. She signed M, right? Would, do you remember how she signed? It was M Antonio? Um, I think she puts her whole name. Does she put her whole name in? The whole name? Uh, Randy's not paying attention. <laughs> and yeah, your husband Randy is also a uh, very, very talented potter and, and flint snapper. Um, I've seen some of his work both, uh, both in pottery and in, uh, you know, making these beautiful arrow points. Um, he's sitting directly behind me, uh, looking wisely on at <laughs> the, the proceedings. <laughs> yeah, uh, lovely. It seems as though the uh, the brown paint, as you're putting it on, dries pretty quickly. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So once it's kind of dry there, but before it's fired, is there a risk of it kind of smudging if you go over it with your hand or something? Or is it pretty, pretty, st oh. Wow. That's remarkable.
So the the two paints that you have there in the center, the kind of uh, they look kind of orange or kind of yellowy. You said those are sandstone. Yeah. And are they both the same kind of stone, just darker and lighter uh, versions of it, or are they two different stone? Um, they're two different. Okay. Two different ones. Yeah. Wow. Can tell where I am, um, where I scratched it because of my nails. Oh but no! <laughs> <laughs> oh geez, let me see. Let me grab that. So point it out. Oh yeah. So that's one of the dangers of working with those fabulous nails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got them done for um, graduation. My my niece graduated. Oh, congratulations! Yeah. Oh, well, that's and wonderful. my granddaughter. Well, they look great. I can, I can appreciate how that might be a slight challenge, though. So I need to take them off. <laughs> I, uh, 
Yeah, if my nails are like a little too long, I feel like I can barely walk. Um, so I'm impressed. You're doing some very fine work there. Is blue the, the color for uh, your niece's school? Yeah. Or? yeah. Also for the cowboys, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, that's very exciting. Um, does she have any, uh, any plans for, for after school now? I think she, um, she got a, a scholarship for, but I don't know where she's going, but um, she's a volleyball player. Oh, cool. Awesome. She got a sports athletic scholarship? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Do, uh, do, do any of the younger members of your family, uh, are there any of them interested in, in potting or in painting? So. No. Yeah, and then I have a um, um, my niece. Her her daughter also graduated from Grants High School. Oh, cool! And she was one of the top ten. She was number four. Yeah, so wow. she she did good this year. That's awesome. Her name's McKaylee. McKaylee. McKaylee Antonio. McKaylee Antonio. She might be uh, running the country soon, huh? No. Yep. <laughs> Oh boy. Hmm. There was four, four girls that made top ten from Akuma. Wow. Yeah. What do you uh, what do you attribute that to? Just the, the natural talent of the the Akuma women. <laughs> or no, that's that's wonderful. That's really lovely. Hmm. Were you good in school? No. I didn't like school. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was not good in school. I was a bit of a, I was a, bit of a shirker. Well, let's see. Wow. wow, this painting is coming along. It's quite, uh, it's quite laborious, though. I, I'm, do you ever take a break between the different seasons, or do you wait to finish all of summer no, before I, you move I on? No, I take a break. Yeah. Yeah. Like Switch it up a little bit. Take one now. <laughs> yeah. talk and paint at the same time or do you have to concentrate on painting? I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some people have trouble with that. <laughs> if I were at home in California, I'd be watching the stream, the live stream. <laughs> That's so nice you were able to make it in person. Yeah. If she was in California, she'd be watching. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason he gets me nervous. When when he's standing like beside me or like watching over me. And then I look up at him and I say You know what when you when Mandy does that to me it makes me nervous also. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's only him that makes me nervous. Only him. Uh, same, only him. same here. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. He he was yeah that was yeah. It was right here. It was about a month ago. Yeah. I was thinking no, it wouldn't have been because you're doing it now, but it was. 
That's right. Recently. It was about a month yeah. ago, yeah. About a month ago, and Frederica wanted to come back. So. No wonder it looks so familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But this is our fun little setup. It's fabulous. Mm. It really is so nice when you're out of town, all over the country. I'm the lady from Oklahoma. I said, you can watch online if you're bored. Mm. All right, so how do you decide what designs you're going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. You just kind of go for yeah, it? Yeah, I just... Mm. You know, just once when the paintbrush hits the pot, then it wants to do its own pattern. No, oh, no, that's the first. What do you call it? Uh, in, there, infinity pot. And is there a word for the rim? Just yeah. <laughs> just an infinity rim. Yeah. Infinity rim. Mm -hmm. it's an, now you, you were mentioning, Frederica, I think that there was a, an older piece that you came across after yeah. the first time you made one of those uh, rims that was also kind of like that. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, it's wonderful. I think that's something that I find really amazing about um, a lot of the work here, but your work, you know, too, is that you're doing these designs that you don't see very often. These are kind of some of these designs seem quite, quite unique to you. And yeah. I, one of the things that's so interesting to me generally is is the kind of relationship between the contemporary designs and in some cases the ancient designs and the way that those kind of talk to each other um, you know across time sometimes very very uh, readily you seem to have a very uh, sensitive approach to holding holding true to the techniques um, you know that are that have become the sort of traditional methods and in, you know for example with those infinity shapes, uh, you know, kind of allowing the material to, to kind of do what it will, you know, um, and make, you know, and kind of just honor how beautiful, uh, the kind of wisdom of the, of the material, which I think is just an uh, exquisite, exquisite approach. What's the uh, largest infinity, infinity jar that you've ever made? Probably oh, this one. Wow. You heard it here first, folks. It may be the world's largest. It may be the world's largest infinity bowl. Yeah, there's a smaller one right there. <laughs> Now it must be really tough to paint inside the rim of those infinity uh, openings. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> when you, like, when I wear my glasses, then I have to kind of like, because it hits my my glasses, mm -hmm. or, uh, the, like the bigger, the um, the bigger ones. Yeah. Like the bold, the bold ones that that are like this. Right. Those ones are harder because. Yeah, just to like get of, inside, yeah. kind of. Yeah. yeah, that must be so, really challenging. I have to take my glasses off when I try to fill in the inside ones. Yeah. I have to get right up there, yeah, because otherwise you might be hitting the glasses yeah. into the pot. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, amazing. Can I take a break? You can take a break. All right, we'll be back in just a couple minutes, everybody. Thank you so much.
We're back in business. So, lovely. Are you going to continue with the summer or are you going to hop over to no, a different I'll season? I'll finish this first. <laughs> Diligent. <laughs> just an exceptional potter. Wow. So I, I wanted to just maybe take a moment to just talk about this beautiful infinity pot that you have on the table here. You just brought us this this morning when you came in and uh, you were saying that you've never made one quite like this before. I just wanted to point out to our customers the incredible shape of this vessel. Um, not only does it have the really dramatic swoop down um, that characterizes Frederica's beautiful infinity pots, but I would say the, the angle that you accomplish on this piece is especially, especially incredible. Um, and the fact that you've built the sort of traditional Oya water jar shape um, seems to have allowed you an even more dramatic form with that opening. And I just, you know, I just need to make, make mention of that because it is just exceptional. Just exceptional. And it's perfect if you have it at home, you can rotate it to accommodate the season yeah. that you're entering. We have a wheel that, I mean, uh, like a turntable thing. Yeah. Should have brought it and could have... Well, it's just incredible. I Yeah, so if you get tired of looking at one pattern, you can <laughs> turn it to the other side and look at the other pattern. <laughs> it's great. It's beautiful. You could just get, get rid of your calendar and just give it a slight turn every day. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure that wherever this piece ends up, it's going to feature beautifully in, in, uh, in the home. You know, one of the beautiful things working here is that, you know, you see a lot of pots come and go, and one of the great truths, as I've found, uh, is that the pieces find the perfect home. Um, we've had, you know, pieces hanging out for a while until a person comes in and almost falls over themselves, uh, sometimes even, you know, tearing up um, upon encountering the work. And I, I know with Frederica's, they are just, I mean, incredibly show-stopping. It's a bit of a cliched term, but they are uh, centerpieces. I also wanted to point out this beautiful uh, square-shouldered piece. Um, I'm going to go grab it off the display for a moment and uh, put it out on the table there while, while Frederica works. And so you were saying that both of these forms are kind of new for you. Um, got another beautiful four seasons here. And uh, the way that she's built this piece just shows this incredible, incredible squared opening, uh, squared flare at the shoulder. Just exquisite. And around the rim of that square-shouldered pot, uh, and correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken, is that a, a rain pattern of some sort, with those sort of um, yeah. rectangular yes. portions? Yeah. It's beautiful. It calls to mind to me uh, a sort of rain and the kind of mixed color of a sort of afternoon rainstorm. Yeah. You know, as the sun's kind of coming down yes. and the colors are 
flaring out and yeah. the light catches the water in the sky. Yeah, yeah one of the kind of remarkable things are, are, you know, the way that the sort of natural, natural components of, of you know, what the pot is, is made of, right? The, the earth that the pot uh, is built from and colored with and the way that the natural formations, um, you know, natural forms, rain, sky, and clouds, um, and even in some cases, the kind of a sense of temperature or a sense of uh, atmosphere gets abstracted using these beautiful geometric designs, but they have a kind of intimate relationship with the land. Um, it's just an incredible, I mean, each of these pieces by Frederica is really an incredible repository of, I mean, of history and also a kind of very delicate and, um, you know, describes an intimate relationship with the land, with the landscape out here. And uh, if you're listening at home, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to, to jump into the chat with any questions. I, I'd be very happy to, to read, read them out here as, uh, as we go along. Another, uh, another design that you've brought us recently, um, and I don't know if you've been doing them for a while, Frederica, is the sort of, uh, they almost remind me of like cactus blossoms. Um, they have kind of a squared opening. Um, let me see if I can show one to the folks listening at home. ones here. And could you t say a little something about this, uh, this kind of an opening? Um, I don't know. It, it just came out like that. <laughs> <laughs> it right like that. So. Uh, you're awfully humble, Frederica. <laughs> wow, amazing. Mm. You can't fix them once they get dry. If they get dry, then they That's how it's going to yeah. be. Yeah. They're beautiful. It's wonderful. So you just have to go the way it wants to go. Right. Just exquisite. For anyone just tuning in, uh, the three pieces we have up on the screen there uh, recently came into us from a consigner. Um, we had purchased these pieces, I think, back in around 2010 or so. Uh, Frederico was describing earlier the incredible amount of work that goes into, especially the two there uh, in the center back and on the right side of the screen. Um, essentially, the, the painting requiring almost double the work of some of the pieces that, uh, that, she, that, that we have uh, sort of off to the side there in frame. Um, 
needing essentially to be lined twice. And so the sort of delicate grid that uh, goes across the piece has to be painted first um, beneath what you see there, and then again sort of over the top as a way of kind of finishing the design. Um, among other things, it shows that Frederica is no uh, newcomer to the incredible, <laughs> incredible detail that you I'm sure know her for these days. And you're making great progress on this one you were working on. Oh my gosh. But my, my back is tired just watching you. Um, incredible. How long do you get out of one of these brushes before you have to uh, build a new one? Um, well, they get dry, and then when they get dry, then they get... They start to fray? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I think one of the, uh, one of the things that I always uh, try, to, try to mention when people come into the shop for the first time, uh, or if they're not especially familiar with Pueblo pottery, um, is to kind of highlight or foreground the fact that, you know, almost all of this work, and Frederica's work is a, is a perfect example um, of this point, which is that, you know, the materials that are being used here are all, you know, local to the area. Um, there is, in some cases, you know, a thousand plus uh, year long relationship with these materials specifically what it is they're uh, 
especially good at doing, um, you know, and I'm speaking now about the, the material property of the clay, which uh, allows Frederica and other potters from Akuma to make incredibly thin-walled pieces, which seems to have almost an internal rhyme with the kind of detail that finds itself painted onto the surface of these vessels. Um, and, you know, this is essentially a very delicate and sensitive negotiation of the material um, and essentially allowing sort of the material to lead in describing the formal properties of the finished work. And I think Frederica, among, among many other uh, potters, but especially given the sort of the infinity jar shape, um, you know, which is sort of born of this particular atmosphere, this kind of humid day where the, 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 the pot essentially drooped in on itself. And her uh, readiness to accept that sort of movement um, into the sort of formal properties of her work, uh, to me, I just, I don't know, I, I just can't say enough about how, how beautiful uh, these pieces are in person, and also the kind of sensitivity and uh, diligence that... I would say her, her ethic as an artist, um, you know, really displays uh, just really exceptionally, principally beautiful work and uh, I think highlights just so much of what makes, uh, you know, Pueblo pottery, you know, as moving as it is to me. Um, you know, it's this very, very careful and attentive relationship between the materials, um, how they play together, and how they kind of, you know, through the guidance of the hand of the artist, uh, build these just beautiful, beautiful shapes. And, uh, in my word, and their optical properties are also, um, you know, just astounding and really, really do, uh, you know, deserve to be seen in person. So if any of you are in Santa Fe, be sure to come on by and uh, take a look at this incredible work we have here. And Frederica, also sure to match your shirts to the, to the pots. You've got some <laughs> very dazzling uh, pattern there going. <laughs> and we've got uh, Stout, the... Uh, security dog here in the gallery today, looking for burritos. And uh, how about we do this? For every question that we get posted in the chat, we will give uh, Stout a biscuit. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make Stout happy, <laughs> ask some questions. He'll be thrilled to see you. Uh, question, Anderson. We've got uh, Anderson Panetza here in the gallery. Oh, and his son Jamie as well. Good to see you guys. How's it? Uh, how's it going today? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Are you guys doing market this year? Yeah. Nice. Say again. Right on. It's a good spot. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. A lot of people go by. It's a, the free one. <laughs> That's what you want. Traffic, location, <laughs> no? <laughs> All good stuff. All good stuff. Amazing. Yo, yo. Frederica, I wondered if, uh, if you could describe the, that sort of um, stair-step pattern that separates the seasons. Do you have a name for that sort of, uh, that component of the design or? It's just like a rainbow. rainbow. A rainbow, okay. Beautiful. Amazing. And that, that rainbow pattern is something that you'll see in a lot of, um, I mean, a lot of different uh, Pueblo's pottery, but, but there are, you know, examples of that going back, uh, 
you know, I know Mary Histia did a kind of rainbow uh, yeah. design that's quite famous. Um, do you ever feel like there's a kind of, uh, you know, I wonder what, if you ever have like a, looking at old Acoma pottery, if you ever feel connected to it or if you think, oh, that's really, I don't know if you want to speak to that at all, but I know for myself it's very enjoyable to kind of look at, you know, many different eras of pottery and kind of see what carries on, what sort of goes away and comes back, you know, there's a kind of beautiful yeah. conversation that, that unfolds over time. Um, I don't know, if you have any thoughts to that end, I'd love to hear what, you, what you'd have to say. Well, like, when you see, like, the pottery shards, mm -hmm. there's some, like, the patterns that, that I use. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't even know that they were on the old pottery shards. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. And this is something that I think I, I, I hear a lot from different potters is, is you know, they'll, they'll be, you know, after years of working, they'll, they'll kind of find a style or a pattern that they, um, that they love doing, and it kind of comes naturally of trial and error, listening to as you say, listening to what the pot wants. Mm -hmm. um, and so often do they, at some point, find uh, a historic example, um, you know, either an ancient or, or a quite old example of a similar kind of approach, um, which to me, uh, you know, without getting too, without becoming too speculative, does seem to speak to um, the kind of wisdom of the materials. Right, the kind of uh, which I which I'm always just humbled by. And it's just incredible to watch you work this incredibly fine gridded painting that you've done. And so, for anyone who's not familiar with Frederica's process, before she begins uh, the portion of the work that she's uh, working on now, the sort of uh, filling in the pattern. In this case, she's working on the summer portion of the vessel. Um, she first lays out this incredible, incredibly fine grid uh, using the same paints that she's using now, which is derived of a uh, wild spinach plant. And, uh, and so you can see the grid there on the pot, and that's laid out before she begins doing what she's doing now. Um, so just an exquisite amount of attention to detail as she progresses through the vessel. Uh, and you can see that luster on the pot as well, that sort of shine, uh, which is also a sort of prerequisite. Uh, that polish and the slip is required to sort of, you know, ensure that the piece uh, and the paint applied to it stays. And just a really, um, I think, incredible set of both chemical and material relationships at work in these pieces. Um, the, the bee weed, that sort of brown black pigment that she's applying now, uh, requires a certain amount of the, one of the substrates that you find in the clay from Acaba itself uh, in order to fire, to fire uh, brown or black. Um, which is to say, if you were to get a bit of clay from any old place and paint some of that on there and then fire it, you would not have uh, you would not have the designs kind of go on in the same way. And so I think that's one of the things that's uh, you know sometimes surprising to to people who come come into the gallery for the first time is uh, you know the incredibly complex uh, set of relationships um, out of which each of these pots is is sort of born from. Um, that there are sort of no mistakes or no incidental realities uh, when it comes to building and painting uh, these pots in the traditional way. And it's, uh, it's really a, a, you know, a remarkable testament to you know, the sort of continuity um, you know, of the historical legacy uh, you know, of these potters and the potter, potting families out here just exquisite. Yeah. We've got a really beautiful selection of Frederica's work in at present. Um, we've got uh, pieces from various points in her career, as well as um, 
you know, very many different sizes with different designs, different forms, and uh, just a wealth of really beautiful work from her at the moment. Thank you for the question, Mark. Um, so yes, Frederica, you do draw those vertical and horizontal lines by hand. Yes. And you're, you do it in the same way that you're kind of demonstrating now. You use the yucca brush, right, and you uh, lay those out. Yes. So yes, thank you so much for the question. Um, and uh, another, the second part of the question here is a question regarding how long you've been doing this kind of very uh, small kind of gridded designs? For like 30 plus years. <laughs> there you go, Mark. About 30 years. Um, remarkable. Uh, as, I, as I had mentioned uh, a bit earlier in the broadcast, you can see there's um, these pieces here. Let me actually just point at them. Uh, so these pieces here, uh, are both from about, I think, 2010 or so. Um, and as you can see, if you, you know, kind of get a glance at those, you can see that those are, are certainly not um, freshman or even sophomore efforts. Those are quite uh, refined works. Um, just to the, to the point that she's been making this incredibly fine, fine design for, for quite some time. And pleased that you're enjoying the uh, camera angles there. Um, we we want to show what is almost impossible to see, uh, even by the naked eye sometimes, this incredible painting that Frederica's doing. And uh, per, per the promise I made just a bit earlier, because you've asked a question, actually two, we're gonna give Stout two treats uh, for, for, your, uh, for your interest there. So thank you so much. Let me, uh, let me go grab those right now. Okay, you've got another question here. So here's another question for you, Frederica. On that square-shouldered pot there on the, on the table, um, Mark asks, is that several uh, different coils, kind of of different lengths, or are you using sort of one long coil for that vessel? Um, it's just one, one, one coil. One coil, amazing. Just incredible. So there we go, we see that there. Uh, that slightly smaller vessel there on the table. Incredible. Well, let me go grab Stout his uh, well-deserved treats and I'll be right back with you all.
Thank you for your questions. Stout thanks you for your questions. We're going to show off some of Stout's amazing abilities. We're going to do uh, the little speaking trick. There we go. One more. Very delicate. He's a very dainty dog. He speaks beautifully. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Um, just a reminder, any other questions? Every time uh, you ask a question there in the chat, or if you call in with a question, or if you buy one of Frederica's beautiful vessels, we are going to give Stout a little treat. So Stout, uh, Stout would love to hear from you. Now, <laughs> uh oh, I've created the monster. <laughs> Do you have any uh, pets there at home? Mm, one dog. Mm. What's your dog's name? My grandson's dog. Oh, okay. His name's Chomper. Chomper? Yeah. <laughs> That's a cute name. Gosh. And then he. And then he has, um, I think, like six cats. Oh wow, that's a lot. Yeah. I have I have one cat, and she is uh, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Don't let me just you. Just like to watch you for a little Stout. bit. You're fine. Take a set. Sit. How's your day going? Good. That's good. I'm using the yucca. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, right. I chew it down too. Just to like a paintbrush. Yeah. And um, I make all my fine lines also with the yucca. And then I, I make all the small little squares. Yeah. After I make all the smaller squares, then I start filling in the patterns. Yeah. Yeah, and all the paints on the table are all oh, yeah. natural pigment paints. Yeah. And all the pots are all hand coil, handmade hand coil. Mm -hmm. Yes, Stout. I know. Exciting. What pueblo are you from? I'm from Akama. Oh, Akama. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been here a couple of times. Yeah, this is my own style. As a matter of fact, I even have a few Akama pieces at home. Oh. <clears throat> Just little ones. Mm-hmm. And where are you from? Where am I from? I'm from uh, Los Alamos. Oh. I'm just down here for the day. Oh. Well, welcome. Welcome in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to our over there. Yeah, we're uh, we're streaming live on YouTube and Why for every. Why you put a work? I put a piece of yucca or a paintbrush in his mouth. That's a great question. I think he'd eat it. <laughs> For every uh, question that somebody asks in the uh, chat on YouTube, he's getting a treat. So he is, he is ready for another question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, folks. How are you all doing today? Awesome. So we have Frederica Antonio uh, from Akama doing her incredible painting at the moment. These are all her works here. You can see the. These are all hand done using a yucca brush technique. Um, 
And all the uh, pigments you see, all the colors are either you know, mineral, uh, stone in many cases, uh, or the sort of beeweed that she's using now. Incredible, yeah. A lot of the, these virtues that I, uh, I find myself short on often, <laughs> they're just incredible, just incredible pieces. And Frederica has been uh, making work for over 30 years now. Um, she's, uh, was it your, you said your fifth year at the market this year? Yeah. Nice. She does these beautiful, beautiful uh, infinity jars where you can kind of see the rim curling back into the vessel. Yeah, please. Uh, do we have a caller, Steve? Pardon? Do we have a caller? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Hi, right, welcome in. Hi. Incredible. Hello, welcome. Do the well yourselves. He 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 is indeed yes. I I told him that every uh, time somebody asks Frederica a question online as we're live streaming, he'll get a treat. I know it's it's hard work for him, but you know he's he's up to the task. He's uh, twelve. Yeah, he's an old old boy, but he, he drops about 10 years as long as there's food in the vicinity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks so longingly at these little fragments of biscuit. I know. They're just un, unbeatable. I take a little sit. Um, they're all natural pigment paints. Okay. Yeah. Um, may, we make our own paints. This one is with the bee weed. And what we do is um, with the bee weed, we, um, we boil. We boil the plant until it gets real thick. And then after, when it gets thick, then we put it onto a corn husk. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so this is what it, the paint is. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then these are all made with the sandstone. Yeah, so all the paints are all natural pigment paints. All the pots are all traditionally handmade, hand coiled. And the, the clay that we have is gray. And once it gets fired, then they turn white. Then they turn white? Yeah, yeah. And then like this, this yellow will turn um, like yeah, like an orange. Uh -huh. And then this one will turn like kind of like a peach color. Uh -huh. And then this brown will turn that color. So you fire it once and then you... No, it's not fire yet. Not fire no, no. Oh, okay. and then so you paint it and then fire it. 
Yeah, okay, I painted. It's dry. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's um, fragile right now, yeah. so you, you can't yeah. um, do anything with it until it gets fired. And uh -huh. Yeah, see. These are all fired. Mm. That's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I make all the fine line. I use the, the yucca. And what I do is I cut it and I chew it down to like the small fibers to make all the fine lines. Uh -huh. And then I um, also chew it to make the paint brushes to fill in the patterns. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so. How many hours do you put in like for example that Um well like this one I um probably like maybe about eight hours. What uh, just the the just doing the patterns. If if I'm not doing anything, like if I don't have to do anything, if I if I just sit there, then I'll um I'll, I'll, I'll be like. Yeah, well, it just depends on. Yeah, well, like for maybe like two two sides, and then I wait till like the next day to to do another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> well, sometimes, Frederico, when people ask that question, how long does it take you to paint this? I say, well, 30 years and eight hours. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I just sit there straight, like, but I have, like, four grandkids and, yeah, yeah and you're I have busy. two older ones. and they come. How long have you been doing this? Um, like, 30 plus years. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah, so... Yeah, and that's all my work right there. But, yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. And uh, Frederica also is one of the, I think the only contemporary potter that I'm aware of who does these beautiful infinity bowl shapes. Uh, at least the only uh, contemporary Akuma potter that I'm aware of. Um, and Frederica, would you say again how, how you came about that, that design? Because it's kind of quite a, I think, a beautiful. <laughs> oh, beautiful when, story. when it was still wet, I put it upside down and it kind of went in, so I couldn't pull it back up because once I pull it back up, it's going to crack. So I just had to, yeah, wait, had to work it and I just left it like that. And That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Thank you. It's exquisite. Hot stout. Amazing. Almost done. Wow, amazing. You're making a lot of progress. <laughs> Just incredible. Wow, so. Because my grandkids are not here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. When they come home, then they say, what are we going to eat? <laughs> Do you ever listen to music while you're working? Or do you have like TV on or so? Yeah, TV on. Yeah. Any favorite shows you watch when you're working? Or just whatever's on there? Judge Judy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Here you go. She's an institution. Yeah. I bet she'd be impressed if she knew she was an inspiration for your work. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we need to get judged. If anyone watching online or in person knows Judge Judy personally, <laughs> please have her reach out to us. We, we'd love to we'd love to meet with her. I love the way you tuck the uh, you tuck the ones that are up against the rainbow design, sort yeah. of behind the rainbow. <laughs> That's really beautiful. That is just beautiful. Wow. I would ask her. Would you mind if I took a picture? Um, 
sure, as long as you don't put it on no, Facebook no, or. Home, so I can look at it when I go home. And does the does the yucca grow where, uh, near where you live at there, Frederica? Yeah. You just have to go outside a little ways and pick it up, or you've got quite the nice bundle there as well. Yeah, where well, um, where we live, there's like a kind of like a place with trees, and then there's yucca. Okay. Oh, lovely. Did anybody in your family do this work before? Um, they make pottery, and they have their own own style but um, um i'm the only one that does these kind of patterns uh -huh. yeah so the pottery was in the family but the designs are yours yes You know, Frederica, I see your work almost every day. <laughs> and still, when I watch you paint it, I'm just kind of blown away. Uh, it's just so exceptionally fine. Wow. Are any okay. of your grandchildren showing any signs of interest? No. <laughs> You've got a bunch of athletes, though, right? Yeah. All right. <sighs> I, I try to have my granddaughter do one, but she said she don't have the patience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. No. I'll never give it up. Well, thank you. <laughs> This is a little bit like this one. Yes. That's the closest. Oh. Beautiful. Hi, sweetheart. There's no more. There's no more treats there. You're going to have to go say hello to people. I know. What a... What a... Oh, yeah. Please, just give him a little pet. He's very sweet. If a little bit hungry for treats. This is not a treat. This is a piece of technology. No, you don't want that. That's expensive. He would, he would probably eat it. He is, he is incorrigible. You are a chow hound. That is right. It's not, that's not food, dog. <laughs> it's all food. It's all, yeah. <laughs> if you try hard enough, yeah. Okay, stop. Uh-uh. No phones. You can't have the phone. He's done it before. He's <laughs> old. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that is classic. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> That's tough, yeah. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> yeah. 
Nah, that is a... There you go. It's all a learning experience. No Jack. <laughs> oh yeah, no. The work is so fine that it really does demand uh, a and bit of. Totally. That's right. I. That's you're welcome to. <laughs> it also lets all the customers who uh, who don't live in Santa Fe. Uh, so these, this is uh, we're we're live right now on YouTube. So uh, yeah, people. From, Anyone uh, from who's interested? Exactly, yeah. Hey, welcome so back. You didn't have to drive from Los Alamos if I uh, Well, there's nothing like the live experience. Uh, right. Yeah. To see the real person. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. Every time we get to see your mom, wherever your city is always a mom. That's true. She's quite the following, I would say. Uh, pretty, pretty rabid collector base. Back. Oh, beautiful. How was it? That's great. It's yeah, an I've incredible got some different show. shapes. This, yeah, this is the, a new, new shape. There's a new Complete. shape. And then the cylinder is a new shape. Yeah. And the uh, one with the square mouth. Yeah. Very yeah. carefully. It's a new shape as well. Truly. Thank you. It's, it was, it's really a, uh, it's, it's uh, just about as close as you can get to a perfect exhibition in my, in my eyes, yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, truly, yeah. No, it, there's, there's some incredible pieces <laughs> that have journeyed so far through time. Just an incredible thing. Oh yeah, that's a infinity, infinity rim pot. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this way, you know, if you're not in Santa Fe, you can watch it on YouTube live. We're live right now. Uh, as well, if you wanted to watch it back later, you can kind of see. Yeah, it's it's quite a beautiful way of preserving just a little bit of the technique, right? It's not. It's of course no substitute for. Uh, for anything really, but it's it's quite lovely to see. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, truly. I mean, it's such a it's such a you know intimate transmission of knowledge and uh, you know such such exquisite work. Oh, that's great. I got the one that's the melon. Oh, yes. Oh, lovely. Maria or Marietta? Marietta or Maria? I think it's Maria. A little more than that. When, years ago, I don't know how much the artist came with there before. I'm not sure at the museum. Um, <laughs> and she was, I got one of the I know here. Just got I mean, usually, um, I mean, with, with the artists whose work we represent, uh, they tell us the price, and we go from there. We, uh, you know, we, we try to give the artists as much control over their sort of market as possible. No, I don't um, Oh, and some, uh, that's 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 our policy. Well, uh, I can't well, really speak to, right. to anyone else, but um. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I don't know how you can yeah, no, it's, it's come, truly, truly, there's no, uh, there's no sort of, um, I would say contemporary ceramics, uh, there's, or modern ceramics, really, there's, there's very little overlap in terms of, right, exactly, my, my, uh, my great-grandfather, uh, is from Sicily, and he was, uh, had a pottery business, he, he sold, uh, Sicilian glazeware, you know, storage vessels and things, and, could not be more 
different than, than this. You know, like two inch thick walls, bright blue. I spent two weeks in Sicily, and the pottery there is. Oh, it's beautiful. It is. It truly really is. Right. Yeah, it's a different, different, uh, different ethic entirely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, my my uh, my, my granddaughter. I have four grandkids. I believe it's my sort oldest of, um, grandson. I think it's um, close he's a to skateboarder. the northern part of the island. And then um, my second um, granddaughter. She's a. Um, she runs but cross country and does track. It's my namesake, so I, I would I would like to go. And then my grandson. Yeah, that's. Um, he really doesn't do anything. And I have a seven-year-old granddaughter. Mm. I, I'm hoping mm. she will. I love that. Mm. <laughs> I have two here, too. Right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Frederica is uh, nearing completion on this portion of the jar now. Mm-hmm. Just incredible. So that is a, a sandstone, actually. Um, those two orange, sort of yellowy colors in the center there of the table, which I'll throw up on the camera now for all of these of you at home. Uh, those are two different my, sandstone. My older granddaughter. Uh-huh. She's actually pulling the color from the stone. Yeah, yesterday uh, we were by, by, uh, we were busy and she came home from school and she and said, um, sifting, "What are we gonna uh, eat?" I said, "I don't know. Whatever stone. you're gonna so cook." So you know, um, she went in actually, and she started all of these, cooking. The, the red there, which is just behind the larger I said, vessel, I don't have time to cook. I from, gotta finish. Uh, you know, sort of I was area working on that one. I was trying to finish it. Hill, which is the hill you yeah. uh, come up on your way up from Albuquerque. It's a uh, there's a really really uh, extensive um, I her, like, deposits about of red morning, there the and uh, a lot of different potters from different pueblos will actually go there to 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 get that clay. Um, the brown that so she's applying right now is actually the only botanical element that she uses, uh, which is uh, what's referred to as uh, bee weed no, it just or like waco. Comes to um, it's yeah. uh, essentially yeah. a, a yeah. No, it's water and uh, and the bee weed pigments. Yeah, and then I'm not uh, even so good at math. So it's boiled down uh, until it produces <laughs> kind of a uh, yeah, almost like a uh, watercolor kind of brick, and then it's you know a bit of a bit rehydrated and and and, uh, and painted on. And the grid that you see on the vessel that that she's working with right now is all first painted on by hand uh, using the same the same pigment. Um, which he then uses to sort of uh, lay out the designs from there. Just incredible. Frederica, you're making incredible progress. <laughs> yep. People would hardly believe it's only been two hours. No, no, no nourishment. <laughs> no, we, 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 uh, we had some breakfast burritos before we started. Um, and Frederica, if you need anything, if you need some like juice or a soda or... Just let us know. We're happy to, to, to run and grab you something. Do you, uh, do you feel like taking a little break once uh, you're done with this yeah. portion? Okay. Well, we're getting close. Just beautiful. My word. Um, probably it'll take a bit longer. Um, so one of these panels, there are four in total. Um, working for about two hours. Fielding questions as well, which slows her down a bit, but... It's the nature of the... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You like watching Judge Judy, you said? Yeah. Yeah. It's ideal. <laughs> I don't like watching news. It's too, um, too much. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of depressing and stressful. Yeah. <laughs> the news. Yeah. <laughs> It, that's that's a good. I think if you if you find it humorous, that's a good. It speaks well of your uh, disposition. It's, no, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Right. Right.
May you live in interesting times. <laughs> That's what they say. Mm. I, I would ask her. Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much for letting us know. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. We, um, if you go to, uh, if you go to our YouTube page, it should be, um, it should be available there. Um, yeah, but there should be a link as well on our on our homepage uh, that'll link you to the to the site there. At, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are all her pieces here, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's um, one day when she was working, she had turned the pot upside down. It was still a little wet, and the, the piece actually kind of folded in on itself. And when she realized that that had happened, uh, she went, oh, if I try to undo that, it'll crack. So I'm going to have to work with it. Um, and so she's since kind of employed it. This, this piece that we have on the table here uh, is actually the first um, sort of infinity jar, as she calls them, uh, that is rendered with that sort of traditional water jar oya shape with the shoulder. I think it's the first one that she's done in this way. Uh, and then she was also saying that at some point she encountered a much, much older piece uh, after she had been doing this for some time that was actually done in the same way. And so there's this kind of wonderful uh, echo. <laughs> and this is one of the things that I find so beautiful about her work, uh, you know, as unique as it is. Um, it comes out of this, like, very careful and sensitive and attentive negotiation of the materials that has sort of recurrences through time, you know. Um, and while these works are totally her own and totally unique uh, to her, there are, of course, uh, aspects of the work that you sort of see uh, repeating themselves across time. And this is kind of the beauty of the material, you know. They're, they're stunning, aren't they? Yeah. They're... Right. It's, it's outrageous. <laughs> it's, just, it's just something exceptionally fine. I, I, I think that the, the work itself is so demanding. Um, you know, I mean, if you've ever, you know, done a bit of embroidery work, or I think of when I'm sewing, you know, my neck, my shoulders, my back. It's quite draining, not to mention the sort of... Um, I also have never done those things with an audience, which I can only imagine. <laughs> we'd, we'd just sort of, sort of uh, contribute a little bit, but... I'll be, yes. Next week I'll be here... Uh, <laughs> yeah, embroider. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, if you if you sign up for the emails that we send out, we send out. Uh, a... I get emails, but oh, I don't okay. think I get. I wouldn't have really gotten postcards or you know to say when you're getting. Oh yeah. So I don't think I get anything about demonstrations. Well, grab grab Jen there in the in the blue with the necklace, just standing on the other side of this case here, um, and she's she she would be. Have her sign you up for the emails. Um, you, it, you know. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> 
ignorant twice. That and I was all alone while I was taking these courses and I was just wandering around Santa Fe. Taking photos. Lovely, lovely. So it was very interesting in that case. Oh yes, the Tenorio. Um, we've got that in the back there. Um, yes. I'm uh, kind of stuck in, but but uh, again, Jen or, or Steve there, um, or yeah, just just uh, we we've, we've got it set aside for you, so it's not on the web yet. Nobody has. Uh... Sure. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Sounds fair. Good to see you. Thank you. I guess you know that. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, you're nearly there, Frederica. Incredible. Well, for everyone who's watching right now at home, it is just a, a madhouse in here. People are swarming her. How many uh, autographs have you given out already? <laughs> None. Hmm. Well, you're nearly done with the summer portion of the vessel here. Um, and uh, once, once, we're done with, once we're done with that part, we will take a little break here and give you a chance to rest your eyes, uh, stretch your legs, etc. Incredible. Oh my goodness. Well done. Beautiful. Okay. Right. All right. Let's take a break. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll be back in a little bit.
So, Frederica, now that you've finished uh, this pattern, you're continuing on to the next. Um, is that autumn? Fall. Gotcha. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just wonderful. Wonderful. Where is Denise? Is she off today? Yeah, she was feeling a little under the weather today, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, usually she's here though on, on Fridays. Okay. And so how would you describe this, uh, this pattern that you're doing? Is it kind of like falling leaves yeah. or how? Yeah. Fall. Yeah, falling leaves, mm -hmm. lovely. So do you have your own kiln, or do you, do you, um, to somebody that you know? No, we have our own. Oh, really? Amazing. So, like, whenever we finish, if we finish late, or we yeah. just fire at you, we don't have to wait. Wait for yeah. someone to, yeah, that's great. How, uh, how long does it take to fire the pieces in there? An hour. An hour? It takes an hour and then it takes like four hours to cool down. Okay. And can you fire multiple pieces at once or do you kind of uh, do it one at a time? I just have a small. A small a one? small one, yeah. Yeah. How beautiful. It's just incredible to watch you work. Uh, so careful, oh my God.
This, uh, this part's already sold. Which one? Oh, is it? Ah, congratulations. Oh, that's wonderful. That's very lovely. I'm so pleased. It's a beautiful piece already. Just wonderful. Hi, welcome. Just incredible. What time of year were you born, Frederica? Hmm? What season were you born in? I don't even know. <laughs> no? <laughs> Do you have a favorite time of year? No. No? You? I think I like the, the fall. I think I like spring. Yeah? I think summer is too hot. I agree. I agree. I don't do very well in the heat. I get a little, I get dumb. My brain stops working. Yep. Then you have to fix your AC and all that. Yeah, if you even have AC. Nope. Yeah, no, it's tough. I, I don't do so good. I, I do better in the cold. So I like, I don't know, and the spring is too windy for me usually. I also I get allergies, so. <laughs> yeah, I like it getting a little cooler. Yeah, all my grandkids have allergies. I don't. Oh yeah? You got lucky. Randy has allergies. Yeah. So what's going on this weekend? This car show? Yeah, we got the car show today. We might have another one this tomorrow. I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm the last to know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got we got uh, you know I feel like people are coming into town. It's uh, we got Memorial Day. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any plans for the weekends? No. Sunday is Randy's birthday. That's right. He was telling me that. You guys going to do anything? No? No. Yeah, he told me he's going to be 33. <laughs> and wishes. <laughs> yeah. 
When do you celebrate your birthday? September. September? Gotcha. But I don't celebrate. No. Just another day older. <laughs> that's that's very practical, yeah. I hear ya. You? Uh my birthday is in October. Um <clears throat> yeah. Two of my grandkids, the two younger ones, they're b- both birthdays in October. Oh yeah? What what days? Um my granddaughter she's seven, she'll be eight. Hers oh. is on October second. Okay. Then my grandson, he'll be turning in 14. His is on the 19th. Nice. Mine's on the 14th. Yeah. So for the pieces that you've got, uh, that you're working on for the market, do you have any like uh, showstopper piece or anything that you're excited to, to build up or any ideas for what you're going to do? Not yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to have to start because I'm not fast. Right. I'm going to have to start like next yeah, week. Yeah, it's coming soon. Yeah. No. Uh, time flies. I told Randy, when I finish this, I'm going to leave. He said, you're not going to finish it right away. Do you ever buy fajitas from that over here? I haven't in a long time. Um, they're good though. Have you, do you ever get them there? Yeah. Yeah, they're very tasty. They're, I, uh, they're messy though. That's true. <laughs> that's true. It's tough with them when I'm working with all this pottery. I want yeah. to. I have to be careful <laughs> not to get any uh, fajitas on the pots. Yeah. They're good. They've been there a long time. Been there a long time. Hmm. So when you do market, do do, do any of your uh, grandkids help out, or do you guys do any do some family there, kind of? Just my granddaughter. She comes. Yeah. But she walks all over the place. Right.
She's our gopher, though. Say that again? She's our gopher. She oh, goes, gets, whatever. That's, <laughs> that's good. It's, it's important. You need, as a great artist needs a gopher. Yeah, when you tell her, go, go back to the room and get this, she'll go. And... Yeah, that's good. Oh, good. Does she have any, uh, does she like to draw or anything? She, she paints. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think she might, uh, she might take up uh, pottery a little bit? No. no, I don't think so. No. Just used to all this noise. Uh, you should ask her. Yeah. Um, yeah, it gets pretty noisy down here. Some days it's I can barely hear myself think. It's so loud. <laughs> Sometimes we have people with uh, very loud like uh, subwoofers in their car, and the yeah. glass rattles a little bit. Luckily, no pots have ever broken that way. But <laughs> it could happen. My daughter had got one of those real big speakers in her car. Oh, yeah. And um, my grandson, he was small. And she was, I guess, from the beat, it was making his heart, like, jump or something. Whoa. So she took him to the hospital, and they were wondering why. But I already knew it was probably that big old. That's wild, yeah. Sometimes when I, if I go to a concert and it's too loud, oh, you should ask her. I'm not sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that, that's all my work right there, yeah. Where? We have a few pieces yeah. of hers in the case there, yeah. Do you ever uh, draw or paint like on on paper or anything when you're huh? when you're not making uh, pottery? Do you ever draw or paint on paper? No. No.
All right, amazing. You don't do any, do you do any finishing once the piece is fired? Hmm? What were you saying? Do you, have, do you do any finishing to the piece or sealing with anything once it's done being fired? Or... Like what do you, you um, I know some 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 people like uh, will use like egg white or something to kind of put on the pot after it's fired. Oh no. Mm -mm.
They said to put them in the vinegar. Oh. Huh. For so they won't, you know how they pit. Oh, it yeah. prevents that, yeah. Yeah. So, but. I, but you don't I do that. Mm-mm. No. Some of the shops do. Oh, interesting. Some of the shops do too. Yeah, they, they, they dip them in vinegar? Or, yeah. Or do you just, they like kind of brush it on or something? Um, well, um, over at, um, what's his name? I don't know if you know him. Stephen the Priest. He puts them in the bucket. Really? Yeah. Oh. And it doesn't make the color run or anything? Mm-mm. Wow. Well, he does it with Akuma Party, but I don't know about... Any other? Well, that's remarkable. I didn't know that. Hi. Thank you. Glad to see how you how you do the magic. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the pots are all handmade. They're all hand coiled. These are all the natural pigment paints that I use for the okay. pots. And this is the um, paint that I use. Mm-hmm. It's a bee weed. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, this is, I use a yucca uh-huh. to make, um, I chew it down to fibers. Okay. And then that's how I make all the fine lines. And then mm-hmm. I also make my paint, my filling in paint brushes to fill them in. Amazing. Hmm. 
Do you have to keep adding water to the to the bee weed and the stone? Yeah, because it gets it It'll gets start dry thick right away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You're making great progress, Frederica. It's amazing to watch you work. You're so, uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Diligent. <laughs> it's incredible, my gosh. Yeah, these are all pieces by Frederica Antonio. Um, she brought us this piece on the table just this morning, and then these are uh, works from different points in her career, uh, but mostly contemporary, mostly recent works. Um, but you can see her painting technique on display today. Her very sort of very careful painting with the yucca brush and uh, the natural natural pigmentation. It's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. No, they're they're uh, just remarkable pieces. Uh, that curved piece was uh, something of a happy accident. As no. She tells the story. Um, she no. was uh, drawing the piece. It was kind of a rainy night, and she turned it upside down. And when she came back to to take a look at it, she kind of folded it in on itself. Rather than kind of risk cracking the piece, trying to get it back, she decided yeah. to kind of roll with it. But this one here on the uh, on the desk is really something special. While she's made these uh, infinity shapes before, generally they're a bit more like a bowl. Uh, so this is the first time that we've seen uh, sort of a shouldered jar with the infinity rim, um, which is just quite remarkable. So this is a really a kind of, I don't know, in my humble opinion, a high watermark for... for even for her, um, just an exceptional thing. Um, oh, nice. You don't happen to know what this is, do you? This one? Is this petrified wood? No, I don't know what it is. Oh, no. I'm going to ask the old man over here. Oh, the mineral. Know. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I know. People ask, well, well what is it? You know? What is that? Yeah. 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw my hat in the ring and say petrified something or other. <laughs> I, don't know. I feel like that's a safe bet. <laughs> Yeah, I bet he would. Yeah, he's, he knows a heck of a lot about minerals. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let me know what he says. So Frederica's husband, Randy, is going uh, over to the mineral shop next door of the gallery uh, to get a, a line on what the, uh, some of the stones that they use to sort of prepare and uh, blend the beeweed pigments uh, in with the water there. So we will keep you abreast of what he discovers. All the paint on all the pots are all natural pigment paints. All the pots on here are all um, hand coiled or handmade. And the uh, black on here is a bee weed that we boil. And it boils all the way until it gets like tar. And then we put it on a, um, a corn husk and we wait for it to dry. And that's what we um, use our black paint for, yeah. It looks brown, but when it gets fire, it'll, it'll turn black, yeah. And then I make all my paintbrushes with the yucca. I chew it down to fibers to make all the fine lines. And then I also um, use it to um, fill in my, my pots, yeah. Our clay is gray like this, and then when it gets fired, they turn white. Sloping inward. Uh, yeah, that infinity uh, bowl or, or jar is, is the term that she is uh, she's coined for. Um, yeah, it kind of describes you know just a, the apparent attenuation of the forms, so, uh, rather than being kind of truncated in the way that you know, these are all bordered with a little bit of white on the top. So this one, that would be one of them. That's I think the, the jar shape, the shoulder shape on this allows for a slightly more dramatic drop off. So that it's almost, uh, I think probably like 90 degrees in here, uh, the, the, most, you know, the steepest part of that movement. Um, this is really a, yeah, staggered piece. Next level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> For this one, um, I don't remember. This one just came in. Um, let me check. Give me one second. God, that is amazing. Look at that from just above. Yeah, if you put your finger in there, you can feel the the inside. Yeah, uh, like the, on the rim. Like go like this on the rim. It makes my OCD so happy. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, a genius for this. I mean, this is uh, this is truly a great piece. Of work. Yeah. Let me check out this. How many hours do you 
things. What they say? Um, we'll start to finish that one. Took about like almost two months. Yeah. Yeah. So I finished it uh, this morning, like at two o'clock in the morning, just to get it up here. And that's the only piece that I've done um, for the whole. Just take, just picking it up and, and painting it, putting it down, and doing other stuff, and then get it back and yeah, it's just yeah. So yeah, and thank you. Yeah, when I first started painting, I, um, I started just doing this one pattern right here, just the regular, like this. Oh, when I first started, yeah, I, when I first started painting, I was just doing the checkerboard, and then I started doing that pattern, and then after I done that pattern, and it just, like, just all different, different patterns, yeah, yeah. This one, um, it's a, a Four Seasons. It has four different patterns on it. Yeah.
What a beautiful thing. So Frederica, once you're uh, once you go home, are you gonna keep painting or you're gonna take a little break? Take a rest? Yeah, I'm gonna take a break. Yeah, that's good. Hello. Start again on Sunday. There you go. Oh no, it's his birthday. Oh yeah. <laughs> Randy's 33rd birthday. <laughs> Just a couple years older than me. And his brains. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, please. Don't need to be that scary. Good. All good. So, Frederica, we got a question, actually. Um, uh, it, it reads, I have a miniature uh, by Frederica from the 1990s. It measures only two and a quarter inch in diameter. Uh, do you still make miniatures? And why do you prefer to make large pieces, if you do? 
I do miniatures, but the they're harder to make mm. than the bigger ones. Mm. Yes. They're harder to make and they're less expensive. Yes. <laughs> It's a tough combo. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I can imagine, like, you know, working this detailed already must be just exceptionally draining. So to, to be doing this at such a much, at a smaller scale, I, I can only imagine is, uh, can be excruciating. It's, it's, it's harder on your fingers when you do smaller. That makes sense. Yeah. Right, because you can't hold the pot like this, like you're holding it now. You have to... Yeah. Kind of rest it up. Wonderful. Thank you for your question, Dan. Stout gets a... Stout gets a treat. That's right. Thank you, Federica, for the reminder. Oh, no. It's stout, Stout's treat time. All right. I'm going to go get him a treat. I'll be right back. <laughs> Well, Stout is about to get a treat, and in fact, Dan, uh, because you asked a question, uh, he will get a treat, but because your plants arrived today, he will get two treats. So there you go, Dan. Good to hear from you, as always. Oh, here he comes. All right. Here, let's get, let me set up the camera to uh, accommodate the Stoutmeister. The stout man. The stout man. All right, stout. It's your time to shine. You're too close. All right. Yeah. Hey, stout, do you have anything to say to the nice people? Paw. Can I have your paw? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not a treat. Inside voice? Go. There you go. 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 <laughs> All right.
All right. Well, it's been such a pleasure to have you here this afternoon, Frederica. Stout. There's no more treats, dude. There's no treats. It's just cameras. All right. All right, you're nearly done with that one. Okay. Well, Frederica, we're, we're coming up on four o'clock. How okay. are you feeling? All right. A little tired? No. No? <laughs> You're unstoppable. Yeah, that's fine. You done? done? Well, thank you so much, Frederica. It's You're been welcome. a pleasure having you here. Um, I, uh, I look forward to the next time we see you, which I'm sure will be soon. I cannot wait to see how this piece turns out. Okay. And congratulations on one of the most beautiful jars I've seen in my life. <laughs> Just incredible work. Um, thank you. Well, thank you so much once again, and thank you all of those of you who tuned in today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>